Hey everybody, it's Gauntletx, and welcome back to another premiere draft of MTG Foundations, the core set of all core sets. It's a spicier core set that's lasting longer, but it's still very much a core set. I'm getting a little bored, but I haven't done Gruel yet, so hopefully that can give me some excitement here in this draft today. This is two a red and a green for a 4-4 trample, and whenever it attacks, you get to give another one of your creatures plus four, plus four trample to line of turn, which is insane. If you buff it up any more, then it buffs the other things up even more. This is an incredibly powerful rare. One of the biggest reasons to actually play Gruul. Or maybe we can play Rakdos and splash it in off of these involuntary employment treasure tokens. Maybe some gold vein picks. If I can avoid playing green and just splash in the green half of this, that would be pretty powerful. So I honestly don't mind going for Perforating Artist here, trying to be some kind of Rakdos splash green build. Maybe even Jund, there are plenty of dual lands and Evolving Wilds and stuff in the format. So if we draft those highly, we could do that. But yeah, I mean, the green, green commons in this format are just so mediocre to me that it's been really hard to end up in green. I think I've literally never drafted green yet because of that just have to have the really good rares and uncommons to be super excited about it. I think Land Elves is the only green common I'm super high on. So yeah, I think I'll go Perforating Artist here over Buccaneer. There's Dragon Trainer in red. That combines both of these two cards together, so we're quite likely to play red right now. And Dragon Trainer is a fantastic card, giving you a Chump Blocker and an excellent finisher. Or giving you Sacrificial Fodder and an excellent finisher. Some decks can even, like, flicker the Dragon Trainer, or put it back in their hand to recast it, which is pretty nasty, obviously. Pick four. Alright, Wary Thespian's actually okay, but I haven't seen a lot of Wary Thespians uh, in the drafts I've been doing. But I would consider that to be quite a decent common. The best common here is likely the Luminous Rebuke. Essence Scatter is a pretty good uncommon as well. But with the picks we have right now, I think Thespian towards Gruul looks good. Pick five, there's the gold vein pick. So that if we go for a non-green red deck, we can still splash in the Animist. It is that powerful. We'd like to do that. And the rest of this pack is quite filler. Pick six. Oh, Micromancer and Feybloom trick. Those are by far the best cards in this pack. Incredible, incredible blue cards here. It's early enough in the draft to speculate on them here, but it's obviously a little awkward that we're completely not touching blue yet. Um, You do have to spend more picks making Micromancer good. You have to pick up the good instant one-mana spells. But in blue-red, that's pretty easy, because you're going to take Burst Lightnings really highly. Um, The one-mana removal spell in red. So if we go blue-red, Micromancer is definitely going to be great. Blue-green, it's going to do, like, nothing. And blue-black, you have to find Stab. But Stab's also good. I don't know. I think Fabloom Trick is just always going to be good. You don't have to build around it at all. So that seems like the safer pick. Pick seven, there's a Rugged Highlands. If nothing else helps splash in the green in a red deck, like a blue-red deck or a Rakdos deck. Playing a Rugged Highlands towards the Animist. Sure. The big Kraken thing was fine, but my favorite uh, off-color card there was easily the 2-mana two 2-1-1 two, Soldiers at instant speed. So I would rather just take the, the fixing at that point. Pick 8 Heroic Reinforcements. Boros Splash Animist? I don't know where we're supposed to be here, but we're open. So we're taking the good gold cards. It's some combination of red. Because we have three different great red gold spells. Alright, this stuff is all filler enough to just take the red filler. My favorite being the Courageous Goblin. Just because two toughness is a big enough deal to not really care about the archer pings. Really don't like one toughness creatures. If I can avoid them. Thespian's a one toughness creature, but it has an enter effect and a death effect. So it kind of... Uh, pays off for having only one toughness. There's the employments, which will be pretty good if we're Rakdos. Which is the spot we can be here. Could also take Swift Water Cliffs. Well, I tried to last pick that Swift Water Cliffs out of nowhere and get a little more speculative here, but. Looks like involuntary employment it is, which is fine. 
It was a really close pick between the two. Let's go back to sorting by color here, because I have no idea where we're at outside of red. Okay, I'm going to put involuntary employment in the Rakdos pile, because I'm really not going to be excited about that unless we're Rakdos. Okay. Yeah, so it still looks like Rakdos or Gruel, ideally, because this Ink Mage is not really good in blue-red. Quite filler. Okay, pack two, pick one. There's a Gruel removal spell. There's also a Rakdos removal spell on a stick and a regular Rakdos removal spell to stab. So you have to get a Morbid trigger for Tragic Banshee, but that's easy enough in a pretty aggressive deck. And a 5-mana five 5-3, five, give something minus 13, minus 13 is insane. Yeah, I think we take Tragic Banshee. And we build our deck to curve well and trade off and trigger the morbid stuff. So we have involuntary employment and gold vein pick to splash in this animist and a rugged highlands. Chandra, not again. Not after last draft. Never again. Never again, seven drop. I lie. We have a gold vein pick and an involuntary employment in this deck. We're taking Chandra. I can burn you to cinders, ashes. And we got her early enough. We can try to take more treasure-producing cards like Gold Vein Pick and stuff. Um, Brazen Scourge and Gyrograph Pool are fine filler creatures for this deck, but I'd rather uh, help out the Animus with the Evolving Wilds and make that really consistent. Another Gold Vein Pick that helps with the Animus and the Chandra, which is a huge deal. Pick five... Dang it, these Rakdos cards kind of suck. I feel like negotiation's really slow. We already have a Chandra taking up, like, Slab and Drop Incredible Spell slot. Macabalt's is really slow, and then it's just a bunch of four mana creatures. Like, no four mana creatures that exciting. Get the Life Drainer. There's some Graveyard Recursion. I'll take the Life Drainer. Ooh, Heartfire Emulator is wonderful. It's a way better pack. Two mana, two, two prowess. You can sack it, trade off into something. Wow, this pack's also really good. Stab for super cheap removal. I probably have to take that. I don't have any removal outside of Tragic Banshee right now. But we also have Infestation Sage, which is great to sacrifice. We don't have any way to sacrifice it right now, though. Um, and then Dragon Trainer, which is another incredible five drop. I like to cut the Soul Caller, so I need just two 5-drops right now, but still, Stab is super important here. And we still get a good 5-drop with Gorehorn Raider. It's no Dragon Trainer, but it is a fine card. Third Gold Vein pick? Yeah, I'll run three Gold Vein picks and then just take all the most filler 2-mana creatures like Axe Guard Cavalry. Just load my deck up with them to get treasure tokens going. Ah, uh, I'm not going to take one over Bloodfell Caves, though. That's perfect fixing. Okay, Brazen Scourge is fine. We have enough Evolving Wilds and Dual Lands and stuff to play a double red card in the early game. Okay, pack three, pick one. Pack three, Gold Vein, pick one. Gold Vein pick copy four. I can't imagine that it's right to run four copies of it. Oh my god. With three Gold Vein picks and an Evolving Wilds, can I splash a Lenda here? Single white mana. It's one treasure token. She seems kind of nuts. Can't be blown up by instance. 4-4 four, four lifelinker at worst. But if you gain some life, should be a 5-5 five, five lifelink menace. I don't I'm gonna go Alenda here. Off the splash. <laughs> what? Oh my god, I need the cheap creature so bad. There's just Rakdos treasure bombs, the deck. There's gold vein picks everywhere. Okay, so we take Frenzied Goblin. So we have a cheap creature to put picks on. We're going to wheel at least a pick here. I think we can get four into this deck. 
I, I don't think I could play a third 7-drop even with all these picks because I'm also using the picks to splash off-color rares. All right, this deck has become Spice. Do I need the Goblin badly enough to take it over Eaten Alive? It doesn't help get the Gold Vein pick in directly, but just helping survive till we hit 7 mana is also a huge deal. And we are still quite low on removal. Yeah, I think I'm getting a little too fancy trying to Frenzy Goblin pick here. I also just need to keep my bases covered with really efficient removal like Eaten Alive, and then here Fiery Annihilation quite easily. And then Burst Lightning here. Sorry, Rugged Highlands and Gold Name Pick, they're good cards, but we need really efficient removal as we're becoming more of a controlling deck that's just trying to slam down bombs. With this many bombs, we could probably play a couple Thrill of Possibilities and just dig for them here. We have no blue cards for the Swiftwater Cliffs, so Thrill of Possibility is a forced pick here. But it's also, I think, not that bad. Speaking of not that bad, we could take Scoured Barons here, since we're probably splashing in Alenda, but Hungry Ghoul for another two mana creature to throw these all these picks on is pretty important. We need to be able to put pick on stuff. Here's a Vampire Gormon to throw the pick onto and get unblockable. Although, again, <laughs> Boros land towards Alenda. I mean, now that we have double Chandra, we can always just cut the Alenda and literally only splash Animist. Only the really consistent splashes. There's literally a gold vein pick in like every pack. Literally like every pack. All right, show me the gold vein picks on the wheel. Oh no, is somebody else going to take every single gold vein pick as well? Oh no! Someone else is doing the same thing? Okay, all in all, that's probably fine. I was 100% going to run four gold vein picks if we got them, but as I was saying earlier, feels like it's probably more cute than anything. Three picks is still going to be good enough. Maybe not good enough for also splashing Alenda, but I think the double Chandra and the Animist, we can get there off three picks. If I did splash Alenda, I would splash Heroic Reinforcements as well, which is cool, but... I think I'm going to do that off of only three gold vein picks. Okay, well, things just got real interesting here. We're definitely playing 17 lands and triple pick towards just hitting seven mana and winning off of double Chandra. Yeah, Chandra does look infinitely better in this deck than she did in her last deck. I'm not so sure we can involuntary employment in this deck. We're not aggressive enough to care about the extra damage it gets, so we really need to sack something to it. And we have Gourmand, Ghoul, and Eat Alive, three total cards. The one treasure token is a little valuable for us, but I think not enough to really want that. Okay, Firebrand Archer is my worst two drop. Got some of these higher mana cards as well. And then got some of the non-creatures. Go call in surprise. I really would like double thrill with double Chandra. But I guess the awkward part of thrill of possibility is like I'm almost always gonna like discard a land to draw two, and we need to hit all the lands to get to the Chandra. Maybe it's fine. To just run no card draw when you have two Chandras in the deck, because that means on average, you get halfway through the deck, you're always going to have a Chandra. You're on average going to have a Chandra. I don't know, I think I can cut some of these. Maybe just the four drops here, the Zombie and the Sower. 12 creature deck, but I think we actually are kind of just more controlling make it to Chandra dot deck. Then really aggro. We want the aggro creatures to get some curve out sometimes, but we can go for a low creature count here. Play a funky little deck. Yeah, honestly, this deck's cool. Whatever happens, happens. I'm already happy, because that draft was wild. Two Chandras. I think they were both passed to us. Am I going crazy? But I think they were both passed to us. Which is even funnier. Yeah. Things are going to be hilarious and explosive. Whatever happens to us here. So let's just hop into the gameplay and see what kind of chaos ensues with this absolute pile.
All right, here we are for game one with two efficient removal spells. The cheap creature to put a pick onto and the pick. There's the Chandra now. I should have played my Swamp first because I'd rather stab a cheap creature than burst lightning it. Yep, already a misplay, but here I am. I'm still going to burst lightning to make it more likely the Goblin can get through with the pick because we've got an insane seven drop here. Any time I can connect with this Courageous Goblin with a pick on it is going to be a huge deal. And it looks like that might be immediately. Unless they want to burst lightning our thing, which is possible. Stopping the pick is valuable. Tragic. Ooh, I braid the creature instead of the pick, though, so if I do find something else, I can still pick up. Hmm, I'm going to have to throw a possibility of removal spell away. That's awkward. Needle Tooth Pack. Okay, well, not yet. I can just exile this, and then I don't have Thrill Mana anyway. I can't Thrill a land away, though. About to Thrill a Stab away. Can I pick up my Gold Vein Axe? Discard at the Thrill of Possibility, please. Thank you. Gorehorn Raider, 4-4. Four, four. All right, well, Stab doesn't kill that anyway, so goodbye. Stab. Brazen Scourge. Okay, Brazen Scourge kind of nutty here because they're forced into a bad block, or I get the treasure which guarantees Chandra next turn. And if Chandra resolves, we win, period. The problem with our last deck that had a Chandra was not that Chandra, when resolved, is bad. It's that you have to get to seven mana to resolve Chandra, and we could literally never do that. All right, say goodbye to your board and hope you have a way to kill a Chandra. And then if the game long lasts long enough, hope you have a way to kill another Chandra. The classic three for one at worst. We've killed two of their creatures and they have to like burst lightning Chandra to finish her. So kill three of their cards. Oh my god, she's still around. She's still here. It's plus two then. play one of these this turn? Alright, so I can play a Goblin Borders this turn, uh, post attack, send in the attack and it might look like I'm just trying to get the raid trigger, and then I get to Morbid Tragic Banshee. Oh my god. That's sick. Thank you, Tragic Banshee. Very cool. Art Fire Immolator can shoot a Planeswalker, but she's at four loyalty now. Oh, being able to clone a Tragic Banshee is kind of nuts. Okay, these raid triggers are pretty good. Their blocks are not great. I don't think they spend an Eaten Alive. I shouldn't have played this Hungry Ghoul. Well, I guess they're just going to blow up the Perforating Artist anyway. Yeah, I sequenced this wrong. We should have played Perforating Artist post-combat uh, after they go for blocks. But since I did play the Perforating Artist, it actually is better that I played the Hungry Ghoul here. But I should have played neither of them yet. Not that it really matters here. Chandra's put us so far ahead. And there's the concession from our opponent. Start things off 1-0, heading into game two. All right, here we are for game two. Two Chandra's in the deck is going to make uh, some opening hands look like this, where we have our seven drop just sitting there, but we've got both our colors. We have good three drops. That is a keep. Playing against blue-red. Balmore starts it off. Stabbing Balmore does nothing. Scourge first, get two swings with this. Because I can swing now and the next turn artist swing, get the raid trigger. This way I get a raid trigger out of the artist the turn that I play it. 
so I don't just like artist here and then they burst sliding it and then I play Scourge next turn. That feels like a worse outcome. Maybe we should be playing 18 lands with this deck. We've got good fives as well. It's not just the Chandra. But I have the thrill to discard non lands for lands, and that's basically always what I'm going to choose to do with thrill. Um, and I have three gold lane picks. Go to 11. Rather than uh, Sack a Goblin. I mean, I guess if they wanted to Sack a Goblin, they would have just jumped. Force them into a double spell here to actually kill the artist. Sure. If I let them kill Perforating Artist, I get to kill the, their Balmore here. And if they don't block, I can just Gorehorn Raider. Surprising, but I'll take it. I think I still have to kill a goblin. If I shot them in face, they would have to discard a card or lose some life. Or sorry, discard a card or sack a permanent here, but I think they're already in that spot. Double Balmore gives them a free discard. Legend rule coming in clutch there. All right, well, can't do anything with this Balmore anyway. Slumbering Cerberus. Actually a very solid blocker. Kills the Gorehorn Raider. Where's the Eaten Alive, though? Hmm. Do I just do that? They can't double block Artist and survive. We send in the team. Puts them in a really rough spot. Or on board, they have to go chomp chomp. Discard a card. Yeah. There's the concession from our opponent. Just stuck a little too low on mana with just three there. I'm sure they had some explosive plays that would have gotten close to killing us with those Balmore triggers. But not going to be enough. We are 2 and 0 oh, heading into game number three. All right, here we are on the play for game three. Nothing till turn three here, but I can get the gold vein pick on the board, I guess. Uh, let me double check through the deck. I think I have to get a red source in case I hit Scourge. Yeah, my only double black card in the whole deck is eaten alive, and that's five mana, so... We get a mountain first pretty much every time. Oh, unless we're supposed to get the green source, but again, I've got the gold main pick, so I doubt it. Oh my god. Oh my god. I thought I was clicking on the Courageous Goblin. I swear to god. That's annoying. Another Balmore deck immediately? Pretty suspicious, Arena. What is this? I'm so mad that I sequenced that like that. I was so dumb. I would have gotten the treasure this turn. I literally just thought I was clicking on the goblin. Guess my hand moved a little bit when the card moved over. Nice. We are still going to get a treasure, but it's going to be a little later than it would have been. Get a raid trigger here. And then have five mana. I can play. I think I have to aggro it here with this mana. I have to go three drop, two drop. Scorehorn Raider doesn't actually do anything right now. Yeah, perforating artist triggers are pretty nasty. I think they're worth 
playing a slightly smaller creature than playing Goblin Borders. Goblin Borders does make the Courageous Goblin Menace, though. As does the Gorehorn Raider. Okay, there's the Burst for the Artist. An Inspiration pick up the Burst? That's pretty good. They don't have mana for it yet, though, so I get a Swing here. Got the Annihilation for Balmor. And 15. I don't think I kill Balmore right now. Just keep juicing up this board. So Burst Lightning unkicked can only kill Gormont here, which means that Courageous Goblin gets its mana swing in since we have a Goblin Borders. We need to keep the maximum damage here unless they go for a kicked Burst Lightning on the Goblin. Ooh, they go for Buccaneer. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 is not lethal. But it's a lot. I'm probably just slamming with the board, right? And then just Tragic banshee -ing. Yeah, because I can, I can wipe their board here. That feels better than just annihilating the Buccaneer. I get a kill on Gormond if I don't move the pick, but then if I move the pick to Gormond and they still choose to trade with that instead of Goblin Borders, then I don't get a treasure token, and that's not good. Yes, I think I have to just not attack with Gormond. Awkward. Like, they probably would have blocked my 4 3 to shut off the Courageous Goblin Menace, but. The risk of them blocking the Gormond was pretty high. To where if they did make that play, it would be pretty significantly bad for us. Feeling pretty good here. Oh. That changes that. Feeling okay here. They can't burst lightning either of these. They don't have the five. So they've got a tap land for the turn. Aetherize. Ooh, fancy. It's pretty cute. It's honestly not horrible. Now I just... Do I fire Annihilation Terror, or do I just slam down Goblin and equip? I think I need to get rid of my Summoning Sickness right now, so I just slam down Goblin equip. Yikes. 
card is insanely good. Here comes the three for one. We have to spend our Annihilation and they draw at least two cards. Buccaneer, Surprise, Mountain, two cards. Sure, have two very good cards. Oh, there's still a mountain in there for the burst lightning. God dang it. That's exactly why I gave them that one. I was like, that one might not have a mountain in it. I feel like mountain is like the best card they can hit there because of the burst lightning in hand. I'd rather sad Banshee than sad Raider. Because they know the Banshee's coming, they'll play around it. The Raider could sneak in lethal. One more menacing goblin hit his game. So keep the pick on that so they have to kick a burst lightning to kill it. That's bad. That's hella bad. I don't think it really matters, but I can force them to just cast the burst lightning right now. First landing Gormonder, that's going to kill you. Yeah. So now we get to know exactly what's going on over there. Can send a 5-3 in. Actually make it a 6-4, they have to block. Jesus Christ, they have 3 think twice in their grave. They have 3 mana, make a 5-5 five, five wire draw card. 3 times in grave. If I put the pick on the Banshee, I'm guaranteed to hit them for three. But if I do it to this way, actually they're dead to Gorehorn either way, right? Because of the Menace. Block take four, die to Gorehorn. Or block take five, die to Gorehorn. I think this kills. Either way. One mana up. Oh my god, that game was so close. Oh my god. Opponent's deck is spicy. That is a super cool brew. But luckily we have just enough beefy 5-drop nonsense to outrace the right. Oof. Right of the Dragon Collar with triple Think Twice Engrave. Absolutely horrifying. 3 and O oh, heading into game 4. All right. Game number 4 on the play. Gormond and Artist is cool. Gormond's actually pretty weak in our deck. We don't have all the expendable nonsense for it, so it's just an okay little curve here. Just a 2 mana 2/2 two, two into raid triggers basically. It is good that we get to raid trigger with the Artist immediately, but The Gormond itself is just a 2-mana two 2-2. Two, two. Got Night's Fire we need to kill pretty quickly, but we've got a 5 damage removal spell in our hand, so we can wait a little bit. So once this has 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, it's going to be flying, and it gets a plus 1 plus 1 counter for every creature that enters their battlefield. Not even every creature that's cast, every creature that enters. So it gets really big really fast. 
Now they can just sack it to a ghoul if I kill it. Ooh, burst lightning. That is some spice here. Definitely want to trigger raids. So we send in the Gormond. Honestly, any trades are fine. And then I guess I probably still have to Goblin Borders even with this Burst Lightning in hand. Okay. That's cool. I mean, Gormon does look way scarier than it is. Because in most decks, it is very, very, very good. Because you actually have Burglar Rats, or the 1-1 one, one that dies and comes back. Or the 2-1 that dies and comes back and it's a 4-3. Or something to steal an opponent's creature and then sack it. So like this is just like a card draw engine and an unblockable creature all in one. It's just really not in our deck. Okay. I hate that I tap out a burst lightning to throw a gold vein pick on this board against all that open mana. I don't think I do it then. Still get the raid trigger if they rebuke this, so that wouldn't be that bad. Make our other friend into a pie. That is sadder, but still okay. Okay, this mana situation is not great if I don't like Thrill Possibility, the Raider trying to draw more mana. But if I thrill the Raider away, draw two, and don't hit the mountain, that's pretty bad for me, because being able to just burst this Squire instead of having to spend the five damage removal on it is pretty valuable. So I'm just going to lock that in and get the pick down for treasures as soon as we can get that going. Ah, oh, there's that card. Never going to remember the name. Infestation Sage is the great card with the Gourmand. Beautiful. I can equip a pick and still have Annihilation up. No! Don't kill everybody! Alright, that's sad. They only have a 1 1 up here. We'll just hold up our removal for whatever comes next. And it looks like we're playing a long game, which means we are digging for the double Chandra. Ah, Burglar Rat. That's exceptionally rude. You're playing all the cards I'm supposed to play in Rakdos. Gorhorn Raider's really bad without the raid trigger, so without the other creatures in hand, I just ditched that. Same with the Gold Vein pick, that's super bad without creatures. And with just the one pick and this mana, we're already pretty close to a Chandra. Okay, they're exclusively on 1-1s one here. We have some time, and we have two Chandras in this deck. We also do still have a third gold vein pick in this deck. So that, that's a thing, too. Alright, it's going to be a little awkward if they top deck a Burglar Rat here. I could have held on to a gold vein pick in case they top deck Burglar Rat. So I discard that instead of Annihilation. But if they hit a Burglar Rat, I'll just exile Reassembling Skeleton forever, I guess. Yeah, I kind of have to play every land for turns that if I hit Chandra, I just slam her down and win. I did not have to play the second pick. That was probably just wrong. And it probably is better to play around Rat. I mean, even if they draw 3-3, three, three, it's like better to hold this Annihilation than exile one of these 1-1s, one -ones, so that's just where I'm at here. Okay. We have two just super lethal top decks now, because we have the 7 mana. Hungry Ghoul. I can already get to 6-6 six, six stats. Because they have 4 mana up. I can't Annihilation that. 
Because they can just sack all three and then sack the token as well. My god. So, yeah, now I need Chandra immediately. I don't think I can even Chandra the ghoul, though. That's not good. Hey, friends. I miss y'all. Alright. Come on. Come on, top deck. Well, um, this might be the dumbest thing ever. But if by Annihilation, I do clear out all of the 1-1s, one -ones, except Reassembling Skeleton, and consolidate it into one creature, so that if I draw Chandra, it's still game-winning. Whereas if I don't Annihilation right now, and then I do draw Chandra, th then I kill like some 1-1s one and they just crack back and kill Chandra. Or I do, I kill the ghoul, but then they crack back and kill Chandra. I'm just gonna make Chandra lethal. Sack everybody. This also makes uh, Eaten Alive a better draw. Oh, or they'll just let it happen, and that's super fine. Okay. That was not the draw I'm looking for, but I've got another Thrill of Possibility in the deck, so it might not be completely useless. Statistically speaking, time for Chandra. Nope, they're both in the bottom 20. And now they get to show us one of their 50 removal spells they're holding on to. One of two, but still. We haven't played a creature in like seven turns or something, so there's no way they can't just kill this thing. Yep. Eaten alive, go to five. Land for turn. Chandra's still a game winning draw. Please. I won't be able to afford Chandra if I draw her now. I'll have six out of seven mana. Hmm. Hmm. I think it's Goblin with two picks on it. And then I just block a 1-1 one -one instead of... Spending a removal spell on a 1-1. One -one. Just block one of them. Got an instant over there again. Oh no, it's food tokens. Food tokens could hold priority for them. That was a really suspicious way that we tapped our mana here. Our opponent could definitely reverse engineer that we have eaten alive in hand. Since Serena tapped our dual land. Which is like, why would you ever tap the dual unless you have a 1-mana black play in hand? Oh, man. Go to one. Chandra still barely does it. I think. I can kill all of these. Oh, no, she doesn't. <laughs> Wait, no, yes she does. Yes she does. Yes she does, because Courageous Goblin. I kill all of these. They can bring back a Reassembling Skeleton? No, 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 because then they can equip. God dang it. Ah, we lost the top deck war by one turn. If they drew the Celestial Armor one turn later, we could win. But the Celestial Armor really just does it to us here. Because we can... Get two treasures from this so that I can play Chandra, wipe their board, but then they have a reassembling skeleton and an insect token. 
I could only eat and alive one of those, and they just put the armor on whichever one survives and kills me. <sighs> Beginning of the next end step, sacrifice is still in. I can't, I can't plus one Chandra and have any hope here. No, they just straight up beat me by one turn. God dang it. Well, whatever. Might as well. Might as well do the thing. If I kill these, they reassemble the skeleton in the end step and kill me with it. If I kill this, it turns into a flyer, and then I can't kill that flyer. Because I have to eat and alive the reassembling skeleton. There, There is no way to do this. Like, theoretically, exiling the skeleton so that it can't come back would get a board state where we can beat this, but then if I don't kill the sage, they put this on the sage and kill me with it. If I do kill the sage, they put this on the insect and kill me with it. But then if I kill the sage and then exile the sage token, then they reassemble a skeleton and equip and kill me because they have the two to reassemble a skeleton. I'm just making really sure, but they're, it's straight up. I can't. There's nothing I can do about it. Unless they eat a food token here for some reason, we lose. But they're never going to do that. That was loose, but doesn't matter in the grand scheme. Now there are theoretically our cards I could have that would win. Like the two damage to everybody. But I guess I only have two mana up, not three. Yeah. They kill me either way. But yeah, they technically they really should have done that in the end step. To play around sorceries. Maybe they'll kill Chandra for some reason. Nope. Well, that was depressing. She was a millisecond too late. I feel like we ended up in a top deck war with a deck that's pretty favored in top deck wars because of double Chandra, but they found their bomb just one turn faster, and that was enough. All right, here we are for game number five. Reasonable hand here, not super exciting because we don't raid trigger the artist on turn three. This might be the first time I actually thrill of possibility away a land. In this deck. Well, looks pretty good that we did so. Because, wow, we would have been flooded right now. Stab an artist? Eat alive an artist, alright. At least they had to sack the first level of the Sage. And the Banshee can clear out the second level. Down to 21. Billowing Shriek Mass has arrived to work towards Threshold and then be uh, 
Four four flyer, yikes. I'd like to raid trigger the raider to kill that and banshee kill the shriek mass. Which means I have to play animist here, which is awkward if they just have another removal spell. If they just have another removal spell, it's better to just banshee this token and have them kill the banshee. Yeah, I'll just play the animist. Gives these the chance of actually raiding or morbiding. There's the eaten alive, and that puts the shriek mass at threshold. Filthy. There's the annihilation for the shriek mass. Yeah, I need to slow this game down and get a chance to draw into Chandra here, so we have to kill the biggest creature, and the only way to do that is annihilation. Hungry ghoul. About to eat the heck out of this insect. And we have entered the flood zone. I could try to get cheeky and click on ghoul here, and if they think that I clicked on insect and then sack it in response, then I kill the ghoul. If I do this and they go click. <laughs> but that's not super likely to happen. It involves them uh, misplaying pretty heavily. It's not the worst creature to get bounced back to our hand. These are the worst draws in our deck. Yeah, my god. They are getting fed today. Getting gluttonous over there. Three eaten alive in the top half of their deck. Four eaten alive! Lord have mercy. Alright, well, if they have refute, we just lose. Okay. We might live one more turn. Keep this land for a thrill of possibility. The possibility, of course, being the possibility of having a Chandra in the top 20. Nope. Could this card this land draw land Chandra? That is also a possibility. <laughs> Man. Alright, well we'll definitely evolve in wilds. Ghoul's about to get ghoulier. Well, this feels better than trying to, like, chump attack with tra Dragon Trainer, because then they'll just let one damage through, and I still do the same thing, just with less blockers up. I really don't want to die to removal in a deck that has two Mega Bomb Chandras. So we're going to play it defensively. Solemn's pretty cool. Grab a land and draw a card when that dies. What else do we have to draw into here? Not much. Three removal spells and Chandra's. Three removal spells, two Chandra's are what we want to hit. Don't you dare show me that she was on top of the deck. Because you know if I didn't do that, you would have been like, oh no, she was actually the bottom card. Here's another land. But since I cracked the Volving Wilds, Arena's going to be like, look, you had a Chandra on top, I swear. I don't believe you. It's 2-2 two -two to block a 3-2 now. Oh, 
Dreadwing Scavenger is very bad. Double draw a card discard to dig through their deck. Oh, the drain for two from Soul Shackled Zombie. Soul Shackled Zombie from the ropes. They have to exile their own grave? Yeah, I guess they because <laughs> they ate all our creatures. We don't have any creatures in grave. That's really funny. Is Hungry Ghoul's a 7-7? Seven, seven? Yikes. Only a 7-7 seven, seven if they sack three of their creatures, though. So they could sack three creatures to kill both of these? And then I'd also kill the ghoul. But then, this way they could choose to just sack nothing and kill my flyer. This is really bad for me whichever way I play it. Let's just do the double block, let them kill the flyer. If I don't draw removal for the flyer, whatever. And the misery. Because I also just die on the ground. Yeah, if I draw that, I just die on the ground either way. If I just go for, like, the chump there. All right. This is rough. Because these are exactly the positions I think this deck wants to get in. Which is what's making this really, really disappointing. With the double Chandra. Like, you get into just these long top deck wars with the double thrill of possibility towards double Chandra. It's literally, like, built for these games. And those are the two games we lose. We just get less lucky. Just super flood in that one. Yeah, the games that I'm worried about are the games where our opponent just, like, steamrolls us before we hit Chandra's. Those games, I'm like, yeah, we've got the, the cards to get there when those wars, but... Not with those sequence of draws. You can still draw the wrong stuff. It's just way less likely in this deck than others. Three and two it is. I need a black source really badly for this hand. We have goblin no matter what, but we could go goblin into artist if I hit the black source. It feels too risky though, because it doesn't hit the black source and it really dies. I'm gonna take the mulligan. Excellent. A much worse hand. Snap keep, because can't really mold a five. Okay, by much worse, I meant a little bit worse. This hand has other things going for it that we can actually play a creature and put a pick on that creature, in theory. But our opponent's blue-red, great color pair for really cheap removal to kill like a brazen scourge. Also, terrifying start. Turn one Sailor, turn two Balmor. Lord have mercy. Sailor, Balmor, Kaito is the one, two, three curve. I'm a master of my craft. We're just primed for the flood again. Only get treasures off of hitting players, but I don't need treasures right now. Oh, get two for one by Kaito. Have to spend a stab and a swing to get rid of them. That certainly feels worth it. Intel. I guess I might as well equip. Tempted to burst lightning the sailor. Maybe I should have just done it while they were tapped out, because now in theory. They might just have, like, counter spells in hand, where they can just hold up the draw and then counter if I try to kill it. Okay, if they do that, then I can still just kill the Sailor, but it would have been better to just kill it in our turn. Because, again, that, that case scenario is actually somewhat likely out of blue-red, that they just have, like, a refute in hand. Great. And there's the Lightning for the Brazen Scourge, and I'm completely out of cards. 
Thanks to our lovely Mulligan. And this deck is dead in the water. 3-3 three, three it is. 3-0 into 0-3. Sucks to get all the losses in a row as well. The Scourge is out of Burst Lightning Reach, but being completely empty-handed here, doubt there's any shot we outrace them. They can just go land Burst Lightning our face, take 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We are at 6 life if they just Burst Lightning us here. We just have a third game in a row where we can win if we top deck Chandra and just lose if anything else. Uh oh. Double think twice is a lot of damage. Yeah, they're definitely on a two turn kill. At worst, if they have bulk up, we're dead right now. Arena has such hilarious jokes today. Man, I think we drew all three gold vein picks in like every single loss. I have one more gold vein pick in this deck than I have Chandra's. But I drew zero on time in these last three games. But every single pick. What can you do? Three and three it is. Still think this deck was really cool and really fun in theory. Yeah, looking at the deck list, it is really fun. And it was fun for the most part, but the losses three in a row and losing like that was not the greatest. It was not fun to lose like that because we didn't really get to do much. Kind of just stare at lands and picks. Three games in a row. Really fun draft itself, though, in terms of, like, building this deck, getting towards the double Chandra. That was pretty cool. But yeah, I think, once again, I wasn't, like, trying to build the most competitive deck in the universe. I thought we were getting a little goofy with the pick Chandra nonsense, but I really think this deck was pretty decent. I don't think it was the best deck in the world. I don't think it was a guaranteed trophy or anything, but the way that we lost our three losses was really tragic and disappointing if we just got aggroed out when i could actually like do stuff throughout the game have played throughout that would have been great but just flooding out with this is is pretty disappointing it's not like the best deck in the universe at preventing flood but it has incredibly powerful seven drop that has multiple pieces of card draw in card filtering, I mean, one of the games we flooded out, we discarded a land to draw two and still had, like, ten lands by the end of the game. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this, this deck has card draw. It has a little bit of discard. Good removal. Excellent. Bombs at the top of the curve. A pretty good curve early. Yeah, I don't, I don't think this deck is... As bad as it played out those last three games. But it is probably like a 3-3 on average. Because it's not the best curve in the world. It's not the most focused deck in the world. It has a plan. Get to Chandra. Gold Vein pick up two and three drops here. Uh, but because it has that plan, it's got kind of a lower creature count here. Where we've got like very little at that 3-4 mana slot. We're just like playing a bunch of twos to throw picks onto. Um, not the greatest removal in the universe. I mean, Stab plus Annihilation plus Burst Light and plus Eden Alive. These are all really good removal spells, but could use a little more of them. Thrill of Possibilities is generally a little bit filler, but I think when you have two Chandras to dig for, it's pretty correct to run them. And yeah, it's got a lot of raid cards with a slightly lower creature count, which is a little awkward too. But I don't think any of those flaws that I'm talking about with this deck really mattered with the way that we lost. We just hit a bunch of lands. It is what it is. Three and three is going to be the final record for today's deck. Really cool deck. Pretty disappointing, mediocre run. But that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching the video. If you enjoyed this and you're interested in seeing some more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more on your recommended feed. 
you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.